So why not just invest all of your money into the S&P 500, set it and forget it, leave it in there and don't worry about it. Well, you may have heard of this phrase before by Miguel de Cervantes. I probably butchered that. And he, and he says, don't put all of your eggs in one basket. So there we are. That's the end of the video. Thanks for watching. Hope to see you next week. Yeah, see you later. Well, obviously it's kind of true. Don't put all your eggs in one basket. But there are some other reasons why I think you should consider not investing in just the S&P 500 and think about some other things you could invest into. So here is the first reason of three you are missing out on returns. Let me explain. So I found this graph showing the benefits of diversification. As you can see from the graph, if you are not invested in these sectors, then you are actually missing out on returns and you could be missing out on the asset class with the best return comparatively to the S&P 500 or just US stocks in general. So we call this diversification of asset classes. So that could be real estate, it could be other types of stocks. So we've got foreign stocks, dividend stocks, we've got bonds, we've got natural resources, and there's plenty plenty more where that came from the reason this is so important that you diversify over the different asset classes is that let's say you're all invested into the S&P 500 or US stocks and there is a stock market crash so it could go down 30 40 even 50 percent so in order to protect ourselves protect our money and our wealth we need to diversify across all of these sectors all of these asset classes to protect our money and our wealth which is one of the biggest problems when you do have money to play with is trying to keep it and grow it so i know that's a first world rich person's problem but it's still an issue <laughs> So secondly, there is diversification across assets. So within the stocks and shares world, you need to be diversified within them and not just have all of your eggs in one basket as we, <laughs> we mentioned earlier into the S&P 500 or one stock, that's a no-go. And the reason you probably don't want to put all of your money into the S&P 500 is that it only tracks companies in America. So you're missing out on a whole world of other companies. And there are some blooming huge countries out there with even huger, is that a word? Not sure, <laughs> huger companies in them. So for example, if you invest in only assets in America, then you're missing out on companies like Alibaba, Royal Dutch Shell, BP, Volkswagen, all of these companies. And actually, if you look at the top 10 companies in the world, only two of them are actually from the United States. There's loads from China, there's a few from Europe. So I think it's really, really important not to neglect the rest of the world and not just focus on the US market. Thirdly, we have diversification in time. So this depends on your personal circumstances but this is mostly due to age. So for example, if you are young and wild and free like me, then putting all of your money into the S&P 500 might not actually be the worst decision in the world because you've got the time, you've got 20, 30 years to ride the ups and the downs and the ups and the downs and the ups and the downs. <laughs> However, the closer you come to retirement, the more you want to move out of volatile markets, just in case something bad does happen, we see a correction or a crash, because as I said earlier, it could go down 20, 30, 40%, and then you'd be absolutely fudged. So we don't want that, <laughs> and hopefully that doesn't happen to anyone that is watching this video. So usually what happens is the closer you get to retirement is the more you move into sort of bonds, into commodities, so gold and silver. So it basically just keeps your money a little bit more stable for when you want to use it. So I hope these points make sense and you've sort of had a look at your portfolio and thought, am I too heavily reliant on the US market? If so, maybe have a think about changing it or go with your guns. It just depends on all of those factors that I did say. But for me, I don't mind taking a tiny bit more risk by investing in individual companies outside of the S&P 500 and focusing mostly on the S&P 500 because of the average return it's returned for the last 80 odd years. And I do like putting money into companies that I do believe in. And it's sort of nice to see when you walk past Starbucks that, oh, I've actually got some money in Starbucks. Maybe I should go in Feed the, feed the system. Obviously, I don't tell people out loud that I've got, I own a bit of that Starbucks because that'd be a bit weird. People might look at me funny and I might not have any friends, but yeah. <laughs> To sort of wrap things up, I do love the S&P 500 and my majority of my money is invested in the S&P 500, around 50 odd percent, so there you go. However, I do understand the power of diversified investing, so putting stuff in emerging markets and putting stuff in the FTSE 100 and 
spreading the risk across the world. And of course, it brings that peace of mind knowing that if there is a crash in the US markets, but not the rest of the world, then you're a bit more safe and the returns will keep coming in because hopefully the FTSE 100 or FTSE 250, whatever, the emerging markets would help prop up that issue. And here's what I'd do if I had 20, 30, 40 years to retire and I just wanted to set it and forget it. Here is what I would break down my portfolio as. This is not financial advice, so please don't copy it. Just do your own research and come to your own decision, please. <laughs> so this is almost what I've currently got, but not quite. So I put 50% in the S&P 500, and I put 30% in the FTSE 100, and then I'd have the extra 20% in emerging markets. These three combined for the last five years or so have returned around 10.35%. So that's a really, really good return based off this diversified um, portfolio, but of course, past performance doesn't indicate future performance. However, it's quite diverse and a little bit less risky than putting it all into the S&P 500. So it just depends on your personal circumstances, of course. And again, while it might be tempting to invest all of your money into the S&P 500, just don't forget that you may be missing out on some returns, real estate, across different markets and therefore you're missing an opportunity to diversify your portfolio and you may miss out on long-term gains so it's really important that you do think about these things nice and early on so that you can diversify as much as you can and as much as you want based on your risk tolerance so yeah hopefully that has helped and that's enough for me i'm gonna head off now if this video gets a thousand likes then i will do the top comment so make sure you like it <laughs> and don't forget to get a free share from free trade down in the description below anyway i'm not a millionaire but i'm trying to help you become one so peace